Covering the United States men's national team or U.S. soccer has become exhausting. I, just a few weeks ago, prior to the World Cup, only had to record one of these a week. Now I got to do these things every day. I had a long day at work. I haven't had a nice meal. I'm hungry. But I come here to spend some time with you. More traditional uh, attire. As a day after the United States played Serbia in a... Uh, not necessarily functional international date. Although, if you can check out my video from yesterday, please like and subscribe all our videos here on the Soccer OG under Max, but also check out Soccer OG Podcast. But if you check out my video from yesterday, so click on it now or after this video is done, there was some redeeming qualities to it. So it was good. But that all got blown out of the water when we woke up Thursday morning and found out that Cindy Parlo Cohn, CEO, uh, the president of U.S. Soccer, pardon me, calling a press conference, and we all, our imagination started to wander. Is this the end of Greg Berhalter? Is Greg Berhalter getting renewed? Is this just to confirm what happened with Brian McBride? None of the above. But we knew it was something big. And it was, as Ernie Stewart is leaving U.S. soccer. He was under contract through 2026, leaving soccer to join PSV Eindhoven to become their director of football. He, uh, they also announced, just to confirm, the Brian McBride departure. Uh, this from Cindy Parlocone. While we were sad to see Ernie go, he has helped lay a strong foundation and build a strong sporting staff to ensure the future of U.S. soccer. That to ensure the future of U.S. soccer is bright. The uh, the powers that be also announced that they are uh, hiring a consultancy firm, Sportsology, which must have been mentioned five, multiple times in the press conference. And they are doing a full review of U.S. Soccer's sporting department. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, J.T. Batson, who is like the legal counsel on uh, the uh, are currently on U.S. Soccer, uh, discussed the investigation that's going on with what's going on between the Reynas and Greg Berhalter. He said the investigation had no impact whatsoever. I was like, what? What are we doing then? Why are we having this crazy press conference? It couldn't be coincidence. No impact whatsoever. Are we getting ready for the biggest three-year stretch in U.S. soccer? Who could possibly want to leave this on their own terms? Whether it's Brian McBride, whether it's Ernie Stewart. Huh. Stewart hired back in uh, June 2018. So McBride's out, Stewart's out, Burhalter is out of contract, but not out as it stands. And Cindy Parlo Cohn saying we are, he is still a candidate. That is legal mumbo jumbo. He is not still a candidate. Uh, that is just, they're, they've got to cover their, their backsides here because this investigation's going on. You can't touch Burhalter until the end of that investigation. You can't, even though he's not an employee. But just in case something comes out of it, you wait. And now time is on the side of U.S. soccer, and I'll get to that here in a moment. So everyone be patient. Uh, patience will pay off. What I've told you about the sport of soccer, it is for patient people. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. We feel impatient, but we wouldn't watch the sport unless we were patient. So everyone in U.S. soccer, take a deep breath and remain vigilant and patient as we move forward. Now, there's a lot here to un uh, unravel. So, uh, Greg Berhalter is not coming back. I don't think it's worthwhile having that conversation. He's not coming back. There is a huge opportunity here uh, to start, to clean house and start essentially from scratch with your possessions on, the positions on the men's side. Now, corporations would love that, right? even if you have a very functioning uh, base, uh, a very functioning executive foundation branch, etc. You'd like a clean base. You know, like in Major League Soccer, when a new club comes around and they don't have to worry about salary cap and this or that and everything's clean and fresh, they have an advantage. So it's not apples to apples there, but U.S. Soccer with a new sporting director, 
a new general manager. By the way, I don't know if they fill those two. Remember, Stewart was the general manager, got shot up. Uh, I don't know if... I mean, what did Brian McBride do? I mean, put the roster... I mean, do you need a sporting director and a general manager? It's nice to have that liaison between the managers and the board, but you know, too many cooks in the kitchen? I would imagine, I don't, couldn't tell you this for sure, that Ernie Stewart called the shots and Brian McBride kind of just nodded. I, I mean, if you're a sporting director in that space, you don't concede your power, right? I wouldn't. You wouldn't. Power is power. That's part of the appeal of these jobs. So, uh, we, we talked about all the things that were, were put into place. And there is a situation now where U.S. soccer has some choices to be made. And I think it's exciting. Everyone's kind of, okay, what's going on here? But I'm curious as to how we got here. Uh, the intentions on Ernie Stewart and it's what is, why is it feel like just everything's happening at the same time. Now, Ernie Stewart is taking over a, a position, a sporting director position at one of the big names in world football. PSV Eindhoven is right after Ajax, the second biggest club in, or second or third biggest, second biggest club, I would say, nowadays in the Netherlands. Ernie Stewart is from there. He took this job in 2018. His children and his wife remained in Holland. We're hearing reports that multiple clubs approached him to take over this. He is highly, highly regarded in the Netherlands. Uh, and PSV? So, Ernie Stewart saying, when opportunity arose to return to the Netherlands to, Netherlands to pursue an exciting challenging role that was near my family I could not turn it down now if this all arose and Ernie Stewart was either going to the unemployment line or taking a position that didn't have that kind of pedigree then alarm bells should ring but he's taking a better job <laughs> I would say as U.S. soccer fans now, Ernie Stewart's almost more Dutch than American. He played one, he, he spent his whole career there. He spent one year at D.C. United as a player. Interesting Ernie Stewart story before I go on any further. I got to cover U.S. soccer in 2002. They were playing a friendly against Italy in Catania down in Sicily. I got to travel with the team, go on the bus. It was very awkward. They hated me because they're like, who is this idiot following us around everywhere? I was just trying to get some interviews. But I spoke to Ernie a little bit, and what's interesting, I think he wore a size 8 shoe. He was a size 8 foot, and he would wear like a size 5 and a half shoe. He would pack his foot into this tiny boot, and he says it would give him more impact, which it probably did. He was a great player. But uh, I always remember that story. Anyway, getting back to it, this is, not a, uh, this is a move uh, that you take because it's too good to... Turned down. And by the way, it's great that he's there. This will only help American players. Don't be surprised if more American players pop up at PSV, which is great. We have American players at Utrecht and Groningen. We want them at PSV or Ajax or Feyenoord. So that is a nice uh, development here. I, that really gives me pause on how much... Initially, when I heard the words of JT Batson, I said, you're crazy if this investigation didn't have anything to do with this. You're crazy. Maybe for McBride, but... Clearly not Ernie Stewart. Ernie Stewart, uh, we also heard from the powers that this has been cooking for some time. That this move has been on the cards for some time. And they were preparing for it uh, because he's been high demand. Dutch clubs have been tracking Ernie Stewart and now he finally made the move. <sighs> Woo, here we go. Oh, by the way, Claudio Reyna resigned as sporting director of Austin FC. So it was just... I mean, I, I can't believe you as soccer. I just need a day off. It's exciting and I love it, but chill out. <laughs> it is bonkers. It's not going to go away. I don't think it's going to go away. So, Ernie Stewart takes this job. And by the way, I mean, we talk about a clean slate. So, just in the last couple of years, Dan Flynn out. Jay Burhalter out. Sunil Gulati out. Uh, now you have... Brian McBride, Ernie Stewart, and Greg Berhalter soon enough. That's what we wanted. Now, is Galati and uh, some of these other people still hovering in the background? Probably. 
and we need U.S. soccer to push on through. And we'll see about this sportsology. Because if they are reviewing the sporting structure to make sure, these are their words, that U.S. soccer is set up for success, based on what we know, I'm not, you know, U.S. soccer is fine, but it's small potatoes, right? If you're looking for success and sportology, sportology is going to say this is a, uh, a, 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 a company that is in powering themselves for this 2026 World Cup, they're going to go, you're crazy. You guys are not set up for this. I'm curious about the sportology findings, uh, if in fact they're as independent as they would sound to be. But the fact that they are there, a consulting firm, makes you wonder that they really want to get this right. They have to. They have to. By the way, Ernie Stewart under contract at PSV till 2027. Uh... I look I, overall. I'm, I'm look. I think U.S. soccer. We we're just so acclimated or, or conditioned to say things are the, the chicken little, the sky's falling, all this. I, I like what Cindy Parlo Cone's doing. Is it as transparent and effervescent as you would like? Uh, getting better than before. This J.T. Batson character. I mean, I think I, I kind of enjoyed his messaging. I think it's a move in the right direction. I'm not doing backflips. And by the way, when we look at what these guys did for U.S. soccer and the U.S. men's national team at the Qatari World Cup, I stand by this. It was a success. Last week, I rewatched USA England. And the world was watching the U.S. play. And the world is walking away from that World Cup because they are, they are not burdened with what we have about U.S. Soccer or Greg Berhalter, they're going, wow, U.S. Soccer is on a nice trajectory. I guarantee you that's what the world is saying. We might not be saying it. I'm saying it. I watched that England game. Played great. They beat Iran. Should have beaten Wales. Imagine they having seven points. Imagine winning that group. They, I thought they were going to beat the Netherlands. Many people did. Those four games equate success for the World Cup, regardless of whether they qualified for the 2018 World Cup or not. It was a successful World Cup. Making the knockouts is good. Uh, if you're bigger countries, you're not happy about making the round of 16, but you'll, you won't call it a failure, right? Maybe a disappointment. But making the round of 16 clears you from that. The U U.S. soccer had a good World Cup. However, that reflects off of Stewart, McBride, and Burhalter. One more than the other. Those are those I stand by. I would like to call them facts, but I know you guys won't agree with me comprehensively. So now we have this clean slate and we have to be patient, as we said. We heard from Cindy Parlo Cohen saying that they're not they're they won't have a replacement until the by the end of the summer. But the sporting director should be filled by the 2023 Women's World Cup, which makes you think they're still gonna have a general manager and a sporting director. I'm just curious about it. I just, don't, I just think it's kind of a waste of a, a position. But hey, if you wanna do it, depends who it is too, right? So we want a, a, a position now. This means Anthony Hudson's gonna be in charge. There's not much going on. We have these two games in January. We already played one. We'll have these Nation Leagues games in March. No one's gonna pay attention to that. We'll have a uh, Gold Cup, he'll probably be there, it'll be his last act. That's fine. We're not going to do uh, musical chairs with coaches right now. Let Anthony Hudson have it and let's be patient. We'll get better candidates in the summer and we can take it from there. U.S. soccer needs time to absorb all of this. You don't rush into this. Do not rush into it. I'm glad they didn't do it beforehand. Now we know why, because these things were in the works. Now we know the situation in depth. I love it. I, look, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the situation they're in. Do they outsource it? Do they go to foreign folks? I, I think maybe a combination makes sense. Maybe an American and, and maybe someone, uh, uh, somebody with footballing business knowledge. I don't know who that is. Someone mentioned Jurgen Klinsmann. I didn't hate the idea. So uh, let's see. We'll be patient. But things are going to keep churning here and we're going to find out the investigation. And I think we'll get the uh, final closure here on Greg Burhalter. So, uh, all uh, generally pretty good news. Ernie Stewart does not lose his job because of the investigation. He is actually getting somewhat of a promotion. 
And we're getting some clarity from U.S. Soccer. Uh, this is not a crisis, as people would say. It's not. If you are going to have a moment like this, do it now. World Cup in 2026. You don't have to qualify. You just have to fill out the calendar. That's not really the coach's responsibility. But you have time. You want to get this right. And I hope U.S. Soccer. I have my doubts. I know. They're not as transparent as they want. They still say things that make you scratch your head. But that's the way it goes. But this is good news. I mean, look, maybe losing Ernie Stewart is not good news. But I, I like the fact that we can kind of look at it uh, from a, a nice wide landscape. I can't believe we're, we're talking about this right now. The Soccer OG, check us out on podcast form where all podcasts are available. Check out the entire library. You will enjoy it. Soccer OG here on YouTube under my name, Max Pretos. Uh, we'll see you maybe tomorrow at this pace.